What up, what up, what up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of the Heart of a Lion podcast. My name is Jay, and you have just entered the lion's den. The lion's den. Do I actually like the sound of that? I mean, it sounds right, right? You know, the heart of a lion, the lion's den. I think it makes sense. If it sounds corny, I could always go back and change it later. But welcome back to another episode of the Heart of a Lion podcast. And today we are talking about compromising Christianity. And personally, I'm not I'm not really talking about anybody else today. I'm just talking about me. And hopefully by me sharing um, my stories of compromising Christianity, somebody else can take from that and learn from that. Um, because, you know, if we're being honest, people compromise their faith. They compromise their Christianity every single day. Um, some cases knowingly, some cases unknowingly, sometimes it's because people think, you know, oh, well, I'm not going to compromise. And then they end up compromising. Sometimes people just do it just because they don't know better. Um, and you know, to just, I'm not going to say it is what it is because it, it, that definitely this is not apply there but the thing is like how do we take that and then encourage somebody or push somebody or love somebody or instill the fear of god in somebody away from you know what they're doing like what applies in, in each situation you know one one scripture that i've always known even when i was a compromising christian is revelation 3 15 uh, through 16, which says, I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. And, you know, that enough really should, uh, you know, all intents and pur- purposes, scare the hell out of somebody. And I do mean like the literal hell out of somebody. But sometimes, you know, scaring people only works for a time it only works for a season and because of the because of how conniving the enemy is it's easy to just get sucked into his um traps it's easy to get sucked into his vices which is why it's important for us to have people around us who are going to encourage us people who are like-minded who are around us who will lift us up out of situations or you know encourage us to turn to turn away from different situations rather than people you know who aren't like-minded or sometimes if you are around people who are like minded and they encourage you to do things that are ungodly, then maybe you need to get out of the circle or around or from around the people that you're around, you know, um, because at the end of the day, we're called to live a holy and righteous and just life. And if we're doing anything that compromises our faith, then we're not either one, we're hiding it from people um, or two, we're just not around the right people. And, and both could be true. You know, both could be, be very true. But you never want to find yourself in a compromising situation and that compromising situation cause you to lose eternity, you know, because, you know, oftentimes people say, well, I have I'll have tomorrow. I'll get it right tomorrow um, or God ain't through with me yet. You know, whatever. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised for anybody. You know, there are people who thought, well, I'll get it right tomorrow and then died that same day. You know, there are people who are like. Um, well, I'll do such and such later and then later never came, you know, so you never want to put yourself in a situation where, um, you find out, um, that the time that you thought that you were going to have, you end up not having. So that, that's that, that's that, you know, but for me and, and myself, what I can say is, so even before I was saved, right. I was not the type of person to drink or smoke. And I got saved when I was 18, but I was not the type of person who who drank or smoked. For me, it just it wasn't for me. I was very anti drug and alcohol and never wanted to do it, partially because, um, you know, I just well, it's really how my parents instilled it in me. You know, I just they didn't not to say that they never drank. Um, I never saw my mom drink around me and she had her reasons for not doing it. My dad would have beers. Um, but he wasn't a heavy drinker and, um, my dad would smoke cigarettes and I never liked the way it smelled. So for me, I was like, I never want to do it. Plus I just knew the fact that drinking and, um, and drugs were, they had age limits on it. And for me, I was like, well, I'm not old enough to do it. So I'm not going to do it. Granted, 
pe- there are people around me who were drinking. There are people around me who were smoking weed and different things like that. But again, I never got into it. And granted, even though the people I was hanging around in the neighborhood weren't necessarily always making the best decisions or weren't necessarily the best crowd to be around at times, they 99 percent of them never peer pressured me or tried to peer pressure me into having um, a drink or to doing drugs or anything like that. You know, so much to the point where if I told them, hey, pass me that right there, they would just look at me like I was stupid because they knew like I was joking or they knew like that that wasn't my thing, that I wasn't really into it. So it was like God was protecting me through them, even if they weren't making the right decisions, decisions, God was still protecting me through them before I was saved. And I am so grateful for that, you know, Um, and I honestly did not have my first drink until I was 21, almost 22. And me actually having that drink came as a result of peer pressure and not because I actually wanted a drink. I, I remember like turning down the drink a couple times with a person um, that I was out with at that time continued to, to pressure me and made it sound good or enticing. So I was like, sure, I'll have a drink. And then I, that was my first drink. And I liked the way it tasted. And <laughs> the type of person I am, if I like the way something tastes, then I'll continue to indulge in it if I see it in front of you. Or I'll continue to indulge in it just because it's like, hey, it's good, whatever. And, you know, that led me into like my like my early to mid 20s, you know, just going to to get togethers and drinking wine and alcohol, whatever. And I would never get drunk, but I would definitely get tipsy. And when I was tipsy, people liked being around me because I just I was silly. Like I just, I I laughed uncontrollably and like, it just, it was funny to laugh at back then. And when I look back at it, it was like, it was really stupid, honestly, but it was just, it, it, it was cool, quote unquote, you know, or I had a high tolerance so I could drink a few wine coolers and not really feel anything. Um, and mind you, all the people that I'm doing this around, all of us are Christians but, and so we were all indulging in it. And again, I just didn't think anything of it. And so, you know, some time passed. I would say a few years passed. Mind you, I will say I was not doing this every time we hung out. But there were times where we w- would hang out and this was specifically happening. But, you know, some time had passed. And then I realized, like, yeah, I'm not really I'm not really feeling this. You know, I'm giving this up, uh, whatever. Um And not necessarily giving up the taste of wine or alcohol then, but more so just giving it up, doing it as a social thing. And uh, so so after that, you know, I say I'm going to stop doing it. I'm not doing it anymore, whatever. And then we get to um, my mid to later 20s, so like 26 to 28. um, Mind you, I'm 37 now, but it's like 26 to 28 where I found myself hanging out with coworkers, going to happy hours, going to parties and going to lounges and different things. And I had convinced myself that I could stand, um, that I could stand out as a light and not give into the temptations. You know, I, I convinced myself that, yo, I'd be good. Like I can hang out with them. I can show them what, you know, a godly man is supposed to be, what, you know, Christian is supposed to be. And I don't have to give into the temptation, whatever. Um, and that's not, <laughs> that's not, that's not at all how it happened. That's that's not a how that's not at all how it happened. You know, whenever we would go to happy hours, I was always tempted to drink. Um, not because I would see the drink. I can look at a drink and not touch it. But I was tempted to drink because my coworkers, specific coworkers who would, you know, they would either ask me if I wanted to drink or if I tell them no, continue and like and persist, you know, in order to get me to drink. And rather than me continue with my no or rather than me just getting up and leaving you know um i would just i would just finally give him like okay i can have one or okay whatever mind you they know what i stand for but i would still allow myself to fall for the trap or still allow myself to give in to the temptation you know so there were times where i would you know have a a a drink of something or i would take a shot you know still trying to be a light um and I mean, on one hand, the happy hours were fun because we would play pool, we would eat food, we would talk about whatever, we would decompress from the workday and just have a good time. But again, the drinking part is where I really messed up because it's like I told myself, 
that I wasn't going to give into this again. And here I am finding myself giving into this thing again. You know, there was times where I would you know, I had gone to different parties that they would have or a uh, time I had gone to a lounge. And I remember I went to one party where I actually did not drink. And I noticed that there were these gummies in a bowl and I love gummies. But I thought to myself, you know, no, I'm not going to be greedy today. I'll be OK. And it wasn't until later or maybe to even towards the end of the party or before I was leaving anyway, that I found out that these gummies had been soaking in alcohol. And I was like, dog, like, thank you, God, for looking out, of me, out for me. Thank you for, you know, putting it in me on tonight that I don't need this or I don't need to indulge in this because who knows how many gummies I would have had. Because, again, I told you earlier that whenever there's something that I like, I will just it's greedy honestly i just i i'll eat it and drink it because it's sitting in front of me like i have to i literally have to stop myself sometimes like nah i'm tripping i don't need this you know so i did not partake in the gummies on this particular night and you know i definitely dodged a bullet there because as much as they were soaked in the alcohol i also don't know if there was anything else in it you know, I because from what I, if I remember remember correctly, there were also some things that were laced in weed that night as well. So it's just I'm grateful for the guy that God protected me for myself, even when I wasn't protecting myself for myself. You know, um, but there was uh, one night we had gone out to a lounge, and you know, then in that moment, you know, I thought it was cool, I had a good time, just ain't really dance with no uh young ladies but just you know danced you know by myself enjoying myself whatever but at the same time i couldn't fully enjoy myself because there were some young younger co-workers who were with us uh, it was a group of us who had gone um but there were some younger co-workers who were with us who were like 20 or 21 and i kept feeling like the protective big brother and i i know what it's like to see men who are predatorial um when i'm hanging out and i'm also the oldest uh, I'm the oldest of four siblings, uh, six of us total, but I'm the oldest of four. Um, so I know what it's like to have to protect those young, who are younger than me. And um, and I know what it's like to see men who are predatorial. So it's like as much as I want to have a good time, I can't really enjoy myself because I'm looking out for these girls and I saw predatorial men there. You know, so there, there's that aspect of it. And then there's also... Um, there was another time where we, we had gone to a house party and as soon as I had gotten there, cause I had picked up a friend on the way. And as soon as I had gotten there, the people I was meeting from work at this party were leaving because one of them had gotten into a fight with another girl and was thrown out. And based on the story I was told, I was upset because the girl's boyfriend had gotten involved. And, you know, in my mind, I'm like, well, I need to go in and say something. Mind you, the person who kicked her out was, it was his house. You know, so it's like what in in my mind, I'm now I'm looking like, looking back at it like what the heck did I think I was gonna be able to do? Right? You know, but at the time I was like, nah, let me go ahead and say something. <laughs> it's like this the, the coworker who was kicked out, I didn't I mean, her boyfriend was there, so her boyfriend should have been able to handle the situation. Um I don't know this girl aside from who she is at work. You know, why am I getting myself caught up into a situation that I should not be a part of? at all you know it definitely would have been a, a stupid decision for me to getting caught up in but again fortunately i didn't do anything i just we, i ended up leaving you know but these are the, the type of situations that i was finding myself in and compromising with by by being around i don't want to say that these people were bad people but finding myself in compromising situations um essentially could have led to things that were far worse you know, in the last situation I was involved in, my wife and I were invited to a weekend getaway uh, by somebody that I knew. And uh, w this weekend getaway, there were a bunch of couples there um, and a few singles that we did not know. A bunch of couples there that, and, and a few singles that we did not know. The only people that we knew was uh, um, uh, the couple people who invited us and we knew one more so than the other. Uh, or I guess just to, I should say I knew, you know, one more so than the other. Um, but <laughs> uh, we were the first people to this house and it was a very, very, very beautiful home that we were invited to. Um, and then as people started coming in, it was just like, man, OK, I was not I was not prepared for this. <laughs> um, I just 
I, I I was not ready for what uh was in store for that weekend. I will I will say that I had never seen that much alcohol in my life, like ever. Um it it was crazy. It was just crazy. And I, I had I'm not gonna say I didn't have fun, because I did have fun. I had more fun than my wife did and you know, in the sense that, you know, there was pool, like so we played pool, um, we had nerf gun fights, um, we had a water fight, all this stuff was fun. However, again, there was just it was a lot of drama that was going on and part of it was due to people drinking. You know, and the weekend we got there on a Friday. It was supposed to be until Monday. The weekend ended slightly early for us because uh, the water fight turned into chaos. Uh, And, you know, the situation had gotten defused. I remember watching the end of the All-Star game and some commotion broke out, some more chaos. And I remember I tried to play peacemaker and defuse the situation and it worked for a second but I realized it wasn't going to be an option when I tried to um, me plan peacemaker and me trying to open the door to go have a conversation with the person and the person on the other end of the door who who is not who I would not the person I'm trying to have a conversation with, but um, a different person pulled the door and it, it, it like he essentially snatched the door out of my hand. And in my mind, I had a flashback in that very moment. And it was a flashback to two different things. A flashback to one, I know how I would have handled this situation if at this point I may have been 10 to 15 years younger and was, you know, not thinking about anybody else, but I'm thinking about my wife. But two, it reminded me of a situation where I was trying to play peacemaker and trying to break up a fight between my friend and somebody else. And I ended up being punched in the neck by my friend. And I was just like, you know what? This isn't even worth it. <laughs> I'm like, this isn't worth it. It's not worth it at all. So what did I do? I walked away. I went upstairs. I got my wife. We packed up our stuff and we left that same night. Mind you, I think it was like a two or three hour drive. I was like, we out. Like, I'm, I'm just I'm not playing this game. And all the stuff that was happening is stuff that I've seen before. I've experienced before. So, like, it wasn't. Like for me as an individual, like it just like it is what it is. It's whatever. Like it like it doesn't stuff like that. I don't want to say it doesn't bother me, but it doesn't affect me the same way it may affect somebody else. On the other end of it, it's like I don't want to put my wife in a situation, you know, like this where something could potentially happen and she's harmed or I'm harmed harmed trying to protect her. So, um. So, yeah, so we, we we packed our stuff and left. And again, it just it taught me, you know, so much, you know, again, I could be fine in a situation. But if it's a situation that by, that bothers my wife, you know, I need to be more mindful or just be more mindful in general about how this might impact her or how this might affect her. You know, how it might affect my kids, how it might affect those who are around me or those who care about me. You know, I, I learned that um, you can be a light in a dark situation. However, um, you don't need to go wherever, excuse me, you can be a light in a dark situation. However, don't ever go into a dark situation trying to be a light if God didn't call you to it. So again, you can be a light in a dark situation. However, don't ever go into a dark situation to be a light if God didn't call you to it. Um, I learned that you can't go everywhere just because somebody invites you. Sometimes, um, uh, what am I trying to say? So. You can't go everywhere just because somebody invites you. Sometimes your no will minister more than your yes. Sometimes your no will show people that you're not willing to compromise and, you know, that you're not with whatever, whatever, you know, and you saying yes shows them that, okay, okay, well, he's willing to do this. I wonder if he's willing to do this. Okay. She's willing to, she said yes to this. I wonder what else she'll say yes to. Like be firm on your no. Don't don't give in to anything that you know is against God or, you know, there's a a compromising situation. Now, I didn't know this last situation that me and my wife went to was going to be like it was, but I should have asked more questions. I really should have prayed about it before even going to see if this is something we should have gone to. You know, so now I honestly don't really like going anywhere where I know people who are going to be drinking or doing anything. 
And that's just me. It's just I, I don't feel comfortable. I've I've never liked being around people who are drunk, but it, it's 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 more so just because one, I don't know how much you've been drinking. Two, people who are drunk don't even aren't even always coherent of what they're doing. And if I feel co- uncomfortable around you when you're drunk, I don't know what you're capable of doing, and I don't know if how I may react if you do something that I don't like, if that makes sense. You know, I don't want to black out and do something to, to somebody who's drunk because of what they did to me. So I would rather just not be around people like that in general. Like now I don't put myself in, in those types of situations. I don't go to parties. Um, if I know that, you know, drinking and stuff is going to be there. Um, I don't go to parties where they're smoking. Like I, I don't like being in those types of situations. And when I say parties, I mean like get togethers and things like that. You know, we doing birthday parties for somebody. Cool. Like I got, I don't mind going to a birthday party. If we're, if it's a bunch of friends hanging out, cool. Like I can do that. But the moment that, uh, drinking or drugs get involved, like, nah, I'm good. I'll holler at y'all later. Um, mind you, I don't, nobody that I hang around now, I don't know that they, that they, drink or smoke if they do it's unbeknownst to me you know because I, I don't I don't want nothing to do with any of that um, but I'm saying that these are the situations that I compromise in and these are the lessons that I had to learn as a result of my uh, of me compromising you know I'm grateful to God that he kept me and protected me even though I was in situations where it could have been so much worse. You know, I found myself in a situation where I couldn't get myself out of it, you know? And for me now, like I stand firmly on Proverbs 31 verses four through eight, when it says, um, and anybody who thought Proverbs 31 was only for women, no, it is not. That starts at verse 10, <laughs> but, um, or verse 11, but it says in 31, four verses, uh, 31 verses four through eight, it is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicating drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert justice for all the infected or the, all the afflicted. Give strong drink to whom is, whom is perishing and wine to those who are bitter of heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. So I, I really lean hard towards it. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes intoxicate drink. Like, how do I view myself? You know, I look at, you know, Jesus is the king of kings, but I'd like to think of myself as like a king of my domain, of my household. Jesus, the father, they're above me, but I still look at myself in my domain um, as a young king. So if I look at myself in that way, I don't need to touch. I don't need to touch wine. I don't need to touch any intoxicating drinks. I don't need to touch any substances that are going to take me out of my coherentness, you know, so. I can't speak for anybody else, but that, listen, that's for me. I can't, I refuse to compromise on my faith anymore. I refuse to compromise my Christianity anymore. I refuse to be lukewarm and justify it anymore. Like, no, this is what it is. This is what I stand on. This is what the word says for me. And this is how I apply it. You know, and you realize when you don't compromise that you'll lead more people to Christ than if you were trying to compromise. Sure. You can potentially lead people to church, get people to come to church or lead them to Christianity that way. But what what then is the standard? What then is the standard if people come to Christianity um, because they saw you lukewarmness that they may think that, oh, well, I don't have to change anything if I start going to church. I can keep doing what I was doing before. But no, God calls us to stand out. We're called to be different. We're called to be set apart. So how can you be set apart if you're still doing the same things? You know, so I, again, I'm grateful for where I am now. I'm grateful for how God brought me, how far God has brought me. I am not who I used to be. Um, I've learned, <laughs> I've learned from all those, you know, mistakes or compromising situations that I was in. Um, if for no other reason that my wife, you know, from time to time will remind me, say, I still can't believe you put me in that. You had me in that house. Da, 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 da. And and part of me is like, dang, like that was, that was where we at now. It was like, that was six years ago. And it was, but you know, it just goes to show how much being around that, like how much of a memory it is for her, how impactful it was. And just not in a good way, you know? So we do, we don't put ourselves around that. We have, we have to vet people. <laughs> we vet people, we vet couples before we allow them 
before we allow ourselves to, to be around them. Like, I need to know who you are outside of a Sunday service. I need to know who you are outside of these conversations that we have. And it's no disrespect to those couples. I just listen. I just need to know that what I'm what we're embarking on or whatever we're going to be around is healthy for us to be around. Like, I don't again there. It's just it, there's too much nonsense going on in this world, you know, to, to allow ourselves to be cut caught up in unnecessarily. And I'll just I'll just end it with this. Um, I had a cousin who uh, did two tours in Iraq, came home. It was my first time seeing him in six years. He was 24. Um, had gone to the military, did two tour- tours in Iraq, saw him for the first time in six years, talked to him very briefly. The next day, get a call from my aunt crying on the phone, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, come to find out that he had gone to a club that night and his friend had gotten into it with some guys there because my his friend was talking to some girl and the girl's boyfriend's um, had gotten upset and my cousin, you know, stepped in to defuse the situation and thought he had de-escalated the situation, whatever. Um, they stayed at the club for a while because they just wanted to avoid, you know, the guys make sure that everything was cool. When they finally leave, they got into their truck and as soon as they got into the truck, um, those same guys did a drive by on them. My cousin was killed and his friend barely lived. And come to find out after the fact that that those guys like they had nothing to do with those girls. They were just looking to start something. So, again, they were saying that like that these were their girlfriends, but they didn't know who these these girls were. They were just looking to start something. And as a result, my cousin was a casualty, you know, because of that. So he may still be here today if he was not at that club. And like these are things that that I think back to when I think about, you know, am I in a am I in a place where I should be? Is this a situation that I should allow myself to get caught up in? Is this a situation I should allow myself to get involved in? You know, do I play peacemaker here or do I step away from the situation? Sometimes it's just better to just walk away. You can't be peacemaker to everybody. If you got somebody that's a Tasmanian devil, if they're a firecracker, if they get angry or want to blow up every time, you know, the little, the smallest thing ticks them off, then maybe you shouldn't, maybe you just shouldn't be around that person. But hey, again, these are the things that I think about and these are the reasons why I just, now I just stay in my own lane, you know. I I, I do the things that God would have me to do. I, I spend time with my family. I go to church. I do other things here and there, but I'm not going anywhere where I may feel like my salvation is on the line or I may feel like my life is on the line, you know, because, again, it's just not worth it. But at the end of the day, it's like this. I was trying to be like Jesus mingling with the sinners. But the difference is the sinners that Jesus mingled with changed and Jesus himself did not compromise. In my situation, I was the one compromising in my situation. I was the one changing. I was willing to go places that I didn't normally go to and do things that I don't normally do in the hopes that I can get people uh, to see the light or to come to church. But I couldn't get them to come to church and I couldn't get them to read the Bible with me. I couldn't get them to do the things that were important to me, but I was willing to do the things that were important to them. So that's it for today. Um, thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Heart of the Lion podcast. I appreciate you, I appreciate you all so much for tuning in. Um, I am now on YouTube with this podcast. So it's on Spotify. It's on Apple Music. Um, now on YouTube, on Amazon, and a few other places. As well as you can also catch this podcast on, or excuse me, you can find the podcast. What am I trying to say? You can find me on Instagram. Uh, I've created a, a, a Instagram for the podcast, and that is um, H O A L Podcast. Again, that is at H O A L Podcast, which is just Heart of a Lion Podcast. So until next time, y'all have a great one.